but um, we're particularly proud of the uh, Paderbach Mountain, which is central to the Drumblade Conservancy, and was submitted now about a year, 15 months ago, to the uh, Provincial Heritage Resources Authority to be listed as a heritage site um, in the Gauteng area. I think it was about a year and a half ago we got an email asking do you have anything in your area that could be considered for a, a, a listing as a, as a heritage site. And at the base of Paderbach Mountain is a little cottage uh, known as, as Paul Kruger Cottage, a place that is claimed he visited when uh, visiting the Heidelberg Command during the Boer War. But as we got into Paderbach Cottage, we realized, or oh, at the mountain, we realized there was a lot more to it than just this little cottage. Um, we then started to do the research on the mountain, and what we decided finally to submit was the entire mountain, but the ridge of it, the cap of the mountain, and that's where you see the, the sort of the intense blue lines going up to the top. Um, that's a Google image of it. Um, what was special about this mountain, and as we started to research, was that we realized there were lots of other activities going on, lots of other studies all happening, and government themselves were investigating possibilities of what should be protected for future generations. And on Paderbach Mountain, there was everything from the Stone Age to the Iron Age to Boer settlements to the first um, white settlers of the area. There was stuff of environmental importance, uh, fauna and flora. There was history, there was archaeology, there was all sorts of things. Um, it would be an ideal project to be included in the 500-year initiative. And the reason for that was, although a lot of this exists within Gauteng, here you had everything in a very small area. You literally walk to the top of the mountain and from one side of it to the other, it's like a miniature table mountain as you'll see in some of the photographs later on. Within that small area you had so much that could be studied by all sorts of um, different speciality learning uh, groups. Uh, we believe that it should be recognized as a provincial heritage site in order to preserve the historical and ecological importance of the area and to facilitate further studies in the future. That is what it looks like, as I say, almost like a, a mini little table mountain. And this is just south of Johannesburg, folks. It's about 40 kilometers south of Johannesburg. It's nestled between Walkerville and the R59, Clip River, an unknown area for most people. Getting on my nerves. I've got a loud voice, so the speaker is getting on my nerves. Um, views of it from the Walkerville side and from the Randvall side. And this is from the top. It's quite a steep little copy, as you'll see from some of the cliff views of it. That is looking down into the area drum blade, and it's, it's literally like, like this. Um, there's several points of archaeological and historical interest, and as I said, from the, um, the, the, the Stone Age right through. In about 2011, we, we, are, we invited some more knowledgeable people than ourselves to come and investigate the mountain for us. I know Bob Denny took the, the trek up there to have a look at some of the plant life. We've had Professor Tom Huffman up there. Um, what we did discover was a number of stonewall settlements and they've been identified as being reused by different groups of settlers over many, many generations. Um, fortunately, most of them had been built on high ground, so they had never been developed or farmed over and they were well, well preserved as, as a result. Um, that's a Google image and you can clearly see the circular structures um, here on, on the edge of the copy uh, of these old Iron Age set settlements. This is quite a big group of us going up the mountain. On this occasion we had the two professors with us. It was Professor Tom Huffman and Professor Johan Kruger, the uh, geologist. So an archaeologist and a geologist on this visit. And these are some pictures of, of how well preserved some of those old stone walls are up there. And we were able to, to gather proof 
with the help of these gentlemen from the Middle Stone Age, 400,000 years ago, right up to the Boer War. I'm not going to read everything through for you. I don't think that's what a pre presentation is about. I think pictures speak a thousand words. Here is some Acombs pottery found on the site, and I must admit, without the assistance of these gentlemen, we would probably have just thought of them as, as pebbles. But once it's pointed out to you that they're actually shards of pottery, it becomes quite easy to identify them. Um, there's a, a quite a well-preserved Stone Age quarry at the top. The, the house, the Paul Kruger cottage as it's referred to, dates back to the 1840s. And further down in the valley there was uh, the remains of an old um, track boer. Uh, 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 homestead which is literally just the mud walls but it's still there to be seen. Um, this is a, a much newer but this is on the other side of Padabat Mountain. It's called, it was called Rose Cottage, it's abandoned now and it's a completely built out of stone. This is the remains of the Trakdur house, this is to the south of Padabat. Um, only the walls remain, it's been taken over by, by nature. And across the road from it, the, the original family, the Comfers, must have started off in this tiny little thing. And as the family grew and their finances grew, they, they built a, a larger house on the other side of the road. And hanging in the passageway was a portrait of the original Comfer Ma and Pa. During the Boer War, we could find no proof that there'd ever been skirmishes on Paderbach, but there was no doubt that the Boers had, in fact, moved some of that stone and created their own walled-in enclosures for their horses. And, of course, they gave the Brits quite a hard time. That, that section from Ferenichen through to Johannesburg, um, Jackson's Corner, which is now Aikenhof, was quite a hot spot and an area where Donny Tehran was particularly active. <coughs> Professor Huffman himself has studied the area and his reports can be found in, in, in the, um, the archives of Wits University. So we know that what we claim to be uh, the, the, the facts about Paderbach Mountain have been verified by other people. Um, this is the little cottage, Paul Kruger Cottage. Considering that it's been abandoned for decades, it's actually quite well preserved and surprisingly large inside. This was one of the, the, the elderly walkable residents that we managed to interview. She'd come to the area as a young girl um, from the Free State to uh, the walkable area and remembered the mountain in those days being called Vulture Mountain, Osfilberg. Uh, because the amount of vultures that fed on dead cattle and dead, dead livestock and told a very interesting story of, in those days, taking fruit to market in Johannesburg was a three-day trek by ox wagon and they actually overnighted at Jackson's Drift. So, very interesting lady. These are more views from Pagabar and I think from the pictures here you can see it really is special and it is just outside of Johannesburg and with some careful planning and preservation we believe this could be um, something very special for Gauteng to be the first provincial heritage site. Right, it's, uh, it's owned by several property owners which of course always makes uh, application for permanent status to be granted that much more difficult because you need the buy-in from all of those property owners. Um, it has very high social significance because typical of old farms, everyone had their own cemetery, their own graveyard, and you would have where the white farm owner buried his uh, family members, and then you'd have where the black farm workers were buried and typical to their culture, their grave sites are not marked. So any attempt, if you develop an area to move very old black grave sites, is quite a long and complicated process. You need to get the permission of the current generation to move any previous generation. So it makes sense to us to declare the whole area 
as protected and therefore protect these socially significant burial sites. And Paderbach is dotted with them, to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west, and many of them unmarked. This is a particularly pretty little one, and it's, it's known as the Charles Glass Chapel. This is on the um, north east side of Paderbach Mountain, but it's not the Charles Glass. It, it just so happens, <laughs> same, same name, nothing to do with the beer. Lots of these type of stone crosses on the top of Paderbach, we don't believe that they're grave sites. We believe that they're where churches um, meet and gather and, and have their, their, their weekend um, church services. The, um, the, the form of the mountain, and I'm not a geologist by any means, but if you were to take a cupcake and invert it, you have the lower slopes and the ridges, and then you have quite a drastic incline up the mountain, and then you have the top of it, which is fairly flat. And it's that ridge, the incline and the top portion, that we're looking to have um, recognized as a heritage site and protected. It has a tremendous amount of interesting uh, plant life, which again, thanks to Bob Denning, we were able to uh, uh, catalog and uh, provide proof of. This resurrection fern is particularly interesting, like a lot of the plants up there when it's dry, they, they, they look as though they're dead. One rain later and you go back and it's beautifully green. <coughs> this particular little moss is a fabulous thing and we, we found and if the pictures are here, we found handfuls and handfuls of baby agamas. It's like a little lizard, a little gecko. Again, off the side of the mountain, this is in, in summer when it's rained, and as you can see, all the resurrection bush has, has turned green again. Lots and lots of pineapple lilies. Um, this was interesting because, you know, the pineapple lily is under threat so much of it has been collected for the uh, medicinal plant market that there are not many places where you find them in, in large swathes growing naturally. And they are still on Paderbach Mountain, as is the beautiful Bufanes. We are involved with the uh, South African Bird Atlas project. And this was in May 2013. We were 164 species of birds, including the black stork, recognized up there. I think we are now up to 170 something. The rock hyraxes are up there. Many, many mongoose species are up there. Oh, here's the little baby, the juvenile ground agamas that we found living in, in the moss and not afraid of us at all. Lots of tortoises up there. And this is a baby eagle owl that was rescued. Uh, we, we think it flew into the electric fence. Um, it was successfully rehabilitated and released back in, in the area. And this is one of the wetlands. There are quite a few of them at the base of Paderbach. Um, a particularly nice clean one, and that is not um, the, the pink pom-pom folks. That's the selignia, which grows so beautifully, we think, because of the, of the water, the clarity and the quality of the water. These are more views from Paderbach Mountain. So our next step forward now is it's been declared, it's been given a two-year provisional protection and, and declared a provisional heritage site. Our next step forward now is to canvas the property owners and hopefully get 70% um, support from them to now go back to the Heritage Resources Authority and apply for a permanent um, recognition of Paderbach Mountain as Kauteng's first uh, provincial heritage site. Thank you for listening. <coughs> and, um, <laughs> and before I leave the podium, if I can just remind the, the members of the Gauteng Conservancies Please go and have a look. We've updated um, the Gauteng Conservancy's website about a month ago, three weeks ago. It's www.conservancies.org. 
And please check the contact details and your Conservancy's email address. And if you don't like the photos that we've used and you've got something better to submit, um, either contact Pauline, the secretary, or myself. Both of our contact details are on the new website for the Kauteng Conservancies Association. Thank you.